today we are going to have a webinar on surge protection device it is one of the first webinar of the series we are going to conduct a series on surge protection device and as uh, gopa sir told today we are going to focus on uh, wire length in an spd how much a wire length in an spd should be uh, and what are the effects of the wire length in an spd so as you know cape electric is uh, we started in 1996 and has a specialization in spd since 1997 okay so now first we are going to uh, discuss about various international standards available for spds so these are the various uh, standards for spds like iec 61643 part 11 2011 which explains about various uh, requirements and test methods of an spd 61643 part 12 which tells about selection and application principle of an spd how to select an spd for what application 61643 part 21 uh, discuss about the same uh, requirements and test methods of an spd for signal and telecom uh, spds <clears throat> where is 61643 part 22 discuss about uh, selection application of spds uh, signal and telecom spds that mean uh, data spds uh, 61643 part 31 discuss uh, uh, 31 and 32 discuss the same thing about the solar pv spds now first two standards 61643 part 11 and 61643 part uh, 12 is as it is ex, uh, accepted by our uh, is also uh, with the name is 16463 part 11 and part 12 the upper two standards has been accepted by india also <clears throat> apart from that as you know spd is also uh, integral part of lightning protection system it is also called as internal lightning protection system so i is 62305 or iec 6235 also discuss about the same thing spd is again uh, uh, with respect to electrical installation iec 60364 part 5 uh, uh, part 5 53 uh, discuss about how to install an spd in a electrical system that means it says how to use spd in a electrical wiring safely now uh, as sir told and as uh, shunali also told that uh, spd is one of the most neglected subjects in india a lot of people even don't know what is the difference between spd and an mcb so today we are going to understand what is an spd why do we need an spd what are the parameters we are going to uh, look while selecting an spd this will be conducted in multiple webinars this whole will be covered in multiple webinars so what is an spd spd as uh, name suggests stands for surge protection devices it is uh, it protects our electrical and electronic equipment from heavy voltage transients known as surges or impulse now uh, generally lightning is going to strike and we don't know how it will be so for the sake of testing and measurement standard has uh, said uh, has defined two type of current impulses first one is 10 by 50 microsecond current impulse second one is 8 by 20 uh, microsecond current impulse 10 by 50 uh, 50 microsecond uh, is basically equivalent impulse current of a positive lightning current that means if we have to define a lightning impulse it will be defined in terms of 10 by 50 microsecond the positive lightning current second one is 8 by 20 microsecond It is an equivalent current of a transient over voltage that means the surges which are going to generate uh, due to some transient switching or some other uh, coupling of lightning those surges can be defined as 8 by 20 microsecond i am going to explain the same through a graph also like see this is a normal waveform of a 10 by 50 microsecond uh, impulse you can see uh, this particular impulse goes from 0 to 100% of its peak value in 10 microseconds and from uh, 100% of its peak value to 50% of its crest value in 350 microseconds hence it is called as 10 by 350 microsecond waveform similarly we have 8 by 20 microsecond waveform also and you can see that in first 8 microseconds it reaches its peak and next 20 microsecond it comes down to half of its crest value from the waveform it is very clear that lightning impulse has a very high specific energy and charge so it can create more damage to your electrical system when compared to a 8 by 20 microsecond now uh, important point is how do we connect an spd in a electrical system suppose we have an electrical system uh, three phase r by v neutral and potential earth now there are two methods of connecting an spd a 3 plus 1 connection and a 4 plus 0 connection for the sake of explaining we have taken a 3 plus 1 connection in this connection you can see that three spds are connected in between line and neutral 
and fourth SPD is connected in between neutral and earth. Similarly, another possible configuration is all three lines and neutral can directly be connected to earth. Right now, we are going to discuss with this particular uh, configuration. Now, in a normal state, SPD is a parallel device with open circuited. Normally, it is in uh, no condition. It is not going to interfere in your uh, system. Suppose there was a lightning strike or some other case, there was a surge through earth. So <clears throat> once there uh, was a surge through earth, our earth will be at a very high potential. Let's say it was on 50 kilovolt earth. Now, since our earth is at 50 kilovolt, there is a potential difference between neutral and earth. If there was no SPD, <clears throat> because of this potential difference, your equipment is going to fail. Now we have installed an SPD. This particular potential difference is more than the voltage protection level of an SPD. That means the threshold voltage of an SPD. So because of this pot higher potential difference, SPD4 is going to operate. Once SPD4 operates, it creates a short circuit. Now, because of the short circuit, uh, <coughs> this voltage which was at uh, earth at uh, earlier at earth will now be reflected at neutral also. So now new uh, neutral and PE are at the same potential, EQ potential. But still there is a potential difference between neutral and B, neutral and Y and neutral and R. Because of this potential difference, SPD 1, 2 and 3 operate simultaneously. Then because of this operation, the voltage which was as neutral is again <coughs> reaching to R, Y and B. Now you see our complete system is at EQ potential. R, Y, B, neutral is at uh, same potential. So there won't be any potential difference across the load and our load is not going to fail. Now whole thing which has happened here has to happen a very at a very short duration. Let's say a few nanoseconds because in earlier slide we have seen that a normal switching surge will be in your system for 28 microseconds. So we need a device which reacts faster than uh, faster than 28 microseconds. So hence we use an SPD, which has a response time of a uh, few nanoseconds. One nanosecond is the best uh, response time we have, and it can be 25 nanoseconds as well. So this is how a normal SPD operates. So basic functions of an SPD. So SPD has basically three uh, major functions. In the absence of surges, SPD shall not have any significant influence on the operational characteristics of the system to which it is applied. That means once we apply SPD to a system, we install SPD inside a system. In case there is no surge when the voltage is normal and stable, SPD should not create any interference. It should be a completely passive element. <clears throat> it should not interfere in the normal working of a system. In this, uh, normally in MOV based SPDs, there is a problem of leakage voltage. Uh, this can create a problem. TOV will also influence the SPD. This we are going to uh, discuss in the next webinars. Uh, second basic function of SPD is during the occurrence of surges, the SPD shall respond to the surges by lowering its impedance and thus diverting the surge current to it, uh, surge current through it to limit the voltage to its protective level. The surges could initiate a power flow uh, current through the SPD. That means once there is a surge, SPD should immediately respond to the uh, respond to the surge by uh, doing two particular things. One, it has first, first it has to create a Q potential. It has to limit the voltage to its voltage production level. Second, it has to divert the surge current to earth or source wherever it is applicable. So it will do basically two purposes. One, creating the Q potential. Second, it has to divert the surge current. Now, in case of spark based SPDs. Uh, there can be an issue of follow current and that can create a very dangerous situation that again we are going to discuss later. Third thing is after the occurrence of surges, SPD, uh, the SPD recovers to a high impedance state uh, <clears throat> and, ex and extinguish any possible uh, follow current. That means once the surges has gone, normally as I told SPD is in no condition, a very high impedance condition. During the event of surges, it will create a short circuit. And once the surge voltage is gone, the surge is gone, SPD should again come back to its normal state and uh, should not create any follow current. Again, uh, in, uh, in case of spark gaps, follow current can create a dangerous situation. So additional uh, requirements also has been specified by the standard 61643, IEC 61643 part 12 has specified some uh, additional requirement. First one is protection of SPDs against uh, the direct contact uh, that is very obvious. That means one is, once an SPD is installed, we should not be able to directly test the uh, current carrying parts of the SPD. That protection we have to provide. Second one is safety in the event of SPD failure, which means 
once we have connected an connected an spd in a system uh, during the event where spd comes to end of its life that means when spd is about to fail there are two possibilities first possibility is spd can fail in an open circuit condition in that condition there is no problem spd is going to just disconnect itself from the system second possibility is spd fails in a short circuit mode once an spd fails in a short circuit mode uh, there is a, a short circuit current which flows from the power source through the spd into the earth now <clears throat> energy dissipation during the conduction of this short circuit current can be excessive and can cause a fire hazard hence spd manufacturers should ensure that their spd uh, should uh, ensure the safety in the event of spd failure this is what is explained in the standard 61643 part 12 as well okay now lightning impulse can come in various ways now these are the few examples uh, how a lightning impulse can come for example first one can be a long uh, impulse and then followed by a subsequent short uh, impulses then the second one can be a long impulse uh, very high impulse followed by a long duration impulse then a subsequent impulse then uh, another possibility is a long duration impulse <coughs> with a superimposing uh, short duration subsequent impulses now these are the various examples it can be anything Uh, it can be like uh, multiple long duration impulses also so here we have designed uh, defined uh, some parameters of how uh, this impulses will react and how this how parameters they will have uh, first we'll talk about the first positive impulse that that means uh, the impulse which is generated due to positive lightning strike now this is very rare uh, generally accounts for 5% of the total lightning impulses lightning uh, strikes Uh, in the first positive impulse peak current will have around 200 kilo amperes in level 1 now we all know that there are four uh, lightning protection levels level 1 level 2 level 3 and level 4 in level 1 first first positive impulse will have 200 kilo amperes current second uh, in level 2 it will have 150 amperes of current kilo amperes of current level 3 and 4 it will have 100 kilo amperes of current now uh, one of the major important parameters is this every time uh, every steepness that means di by dt uh, when we we are talking in terms of a wire length we know that impedance of wire length uh, or the voltage drop across the wire length completely depends on the rate of change of current see in case of first positive impulse di by dt is 20 kilo ampere per microsecond <clears throat> similarly in case of first negative impulse di by dt is around 100 kilo ampere uh, per microsecond in subsequent impulse impulses you see the value of k the i impulse may be lesser but uh, di by dt is very high that is up to around 200 kilo amperes uh, per uh, microsecond so these are the parameters of a uh, various type of impulses like uh, positive impulse negative impulse subsequent impulse and long stroke now let us calculate how much a voltage drop will be in a uh, in a 1 meter wire length so generally we know that uh, a wire length of 1 meter will have a inductance of 1 micro henry now a general calculation for potential uh, difference will be for first positive impulse we knew that di by dt was 20 kilo amperes per microsecond v is equal to l di by dt we all know that so l is 1 micro henry uh, which we have uh, we have written earlier di by dt is 20 k per microsecond so there will be a potential drop of 20 kv per meter in case of first positive impulse with a wire length of only 1 meter similarly if we calculate for first negative discharge of first negative impulse and subsequent impulse uh, impulse v is equal to l di by dt l is 1 micro henry uh, di by dt in case of negative impulse was 100 k per microsecond uh di by dt in case of subsequent impulse was 200 uh, k uh, per microsecond so voltage drop comes around 100 k uh, kv per meter and 200 kv per meter that means whatever good quality spd we are using with one 1 meter of wire the voltage protection level or the <coughs> voltage drop will be around 1 uh, kv uh, 100 kv per meter so now what standard says about this so standard first talk about <clears throat> the residual voltage to a equipment that means the effective voltage protection level in an equipment will be the voltage drop across i will explain in this way the voltage drop across wire plus the voltage protection level of an spd 
plus the voltage drop across the wire. This I am going to explain in the next slide. So as per IS 732 and NBC 2016, the maximum acceptable wire length across uh, SPD is 0.5 meter. That means if you see a connection, this is your uh, main breaker and this is SPD uh, connected in between earth and this uh, line. Let's say it's a line. So from line to SPD, there will be one wire. From SPD to earth bus bar, there will be a second wire. Let's imagine uh, length of first wire from uh, main incomer to SPD is A uh, meters. From SPD to earth bus bar is B meters. So standard says that A plus B shall not be more than half meter. I am repeating again. Standard says that A plus B shall not be more than half meter. That means total connecting wire of an SPD, including the connection between line and SPD and SPD and earth should not be more than 0.5 meter. So there are basically two types of uh, SPD connection. First one on the left side. Second one is a bus bar mounted connection, which is on the right side. Same is explained very well in IS 732 as well as NBC 2016. So, uh, what we have concluded is long connecting wires will have lesser protection. Now selection of SPDs uh, on the basis of uh, voltage protection level uh, and how voltage protection level is dependent on the uh, wire length. Now there are three parameters UW, UP and UPF. UW is voltage impulse withstand of an uh, equipment. Let's say I am talking about an UPS. So every equipment has a certain voltage with impulse with uh, withstand capacity. It can be 1.5 kV, 2 kV, 3 kV, or it can be anything. But it, it they will mention this UW in their uh, data sheets and uh, parameters. Second thing is UP. UP is the voltage protection level of an SPD. That means it is the uh, level at which SPD starts operating. Now U, UP can also be said that uh, considered as a as a voltage drop across the SPD. Now third parameter is UPF, the effective voltage protection level. That means after, after considering all the voltage drop across wire, SPD and the another connecting wire, the resultant uh, voltage protection level is called as effective voltage protection level. Now to ensure the equipment safety, the condition which we need to fulfill is UW shall be higher than UPF. That means impulse withstand <coughs> voltage of an equipment shall be more than the effective voltage protection level of that SPD. Then only that SPD is going to protect our equipment. <clears throat> so let's see, this is an SPD connected in between point A and B and D is an uh, <coughs> backup protection or disconnector fuse. You see L1 is the wire length one. Then there's a voltage protection level of S, uh, uh, UP is the voltage protection level of SPD, then L2. Now effective voltage protection level <coughs> or UPF will be voltage drop across L1 plus UP plus voltage drop across L2. So if we go as per standard IS732 and IC61643, we have considered a wire length of 500 mm. And let us calculate the effective voltage protection level. So voltage drop across uh, 500 wire length, mm wire length, in case of first positive impulse will be 10 kV. As we have earlier uh, seen that 20 kV was uh, for 1 meter of wire length. So for half meter of wire length, uh, voltage drop will be 10 kV. First negative impulse will have a voltage drop of uh, 50 kV. We have seen that for 1 meter it was 100 kV. So for half meter it is 50 kV. For subsequent impulses, uh, for 1 meter it was 200 kV. So for half meter of wire length, which is the standard uh, recommendation by the standard, it is 100 kV. Now we are going to see the calculated UPF. Calculated UPF will be UL1, which is 10 kV. <coughs> Sorry, UL1 plus UL2 is 10 kV. And then UP is 1.5 kV for general SPDs. This can vary SPD to SPD, but generally it is 1.5 kV only. We have considered 1.5 for that reason only. So for first positive impulse, the calculated UPF, the actual voltage protection level of the SPD is 11.5 kV. For first negative impulse or discharge, it is around 51.5 kV. And for subsequent impulses, it is around 101.5 kV. So are, are, is our system actually protected by this? And now what is the solution? We are going to talk about that particular thing in this uh, webinar.
and again uh, this uh, these values are calculated calculated from level 1 I, uh, lpl level 1 we have al also made a calculation as per level uh, lpl level 4 which also i am going to share uh, show so let us consider a wire length of 500 mm and we have con uh, considered 50% current in lpl 4 so one second just a moment so you we have seen that in lpl 4 uh, first positive impulse was having a di by dt of uh, 20 kv and current of uh, 100 uh, amperes so we have calculated first positive impulse will have a voltage drop of 2.5 kv first negative impulse will have a impulse of uh, a voltage drop of 12.5 kv a subsequent impulse will have a impulse of 25 kv so effective voltage protection level uh, effective uh, upf will be for first positive impulse it will be uh, 4 kv first negative discharge it will be 14 kv first subsequent impulse it will be 25 uh, 26.5 kv which again is in, again is very high which again is very high so now we know that with increase of wire length we are going to have a very uh, high uh, upf and we have to reduce that as less as possible as low as possible the best case scenario is if we have a wire length of 0 uh, meter if we have a wire length of 0 0 meter the calculated upf for first positive will be 1.5 kv first negative will be 1.5 kv first uh, subsequent impulse will also be 1.5 kv because uh, because of this zero wire length there won't be any voltage drop and since the wire length is zero di by dt becomes irrespective it is not that important and it, it is again uh, irrespective of lightning protection level okay now uh, these are the various examples of an spd uh, which uh, how an spd now generally is connected in our system if you see uh, sometimes they uh, people they don't have a space in uh, the existing db so what they do is they put spd in a certain uh, D, uh, next db and in that case wire length can be as high as 5 meters and even uh, in my practical experience i have seen wire length even up to 12 10 12 meters and you can just imagine for 1 meter voltage drop was that much for 12 meters uh, cable how much will be the voltage drop now we have discussed the problem what is the solution one of the solutions is we use a bus bar mounted spd or a v type spd which can directly be mounted on the bus bar so this is how a normal bus bar mounted spd looks these are the various advantages it has a high, uh, very large thermal capacity electrodes uh, to absorb the heat dissipation during the surges strong aluminum housing so to prevent any explosion in case there is a uh, surge or spd is heated up or any other reason if there is a uh, explosion the strong aluminum housing is going to protect <clears throat> we have a system with a 1500 plus pounds of pressure which results in, in very low dynamic resistance and higher conductivity again there is no fuel because it's aluminum body there is no fuel <coughs> to create fire or create, uh, emit smoke <coughs> we have used a single uh, distribution gate varistor which contrib uh, contributes to its reliability and long life time this again we are going to discuss in our further slides coaxial sim uh, symmetry for uniform uh, uniform surge distribution which is again very obvious <coughs> see now there is a graph uh, which where we have compared two types of spd drindle mounted spds and a bus bar mounted spds now this, in india generally what we are using as of now is a drindle mounted spd you can see <coughs> with increase in surge current the upf is increasing in a uh, drindle mounted spd for example with kilo ampere surge current upf is around 16 kg whereas in case of uh, bus bar mounted spds there is very 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 slight increase in upf even for this 40 uh, <coughs> kiloamps of surge current upf is less than 2 kv only so uh, in terms of reliability voltage protection level uh, this bus bar mounted spds provide a very good performance so these are the various models available uh, for the bus bar mounted spds strikes of 30 40 and 80 
it comes in various uh, nominal voltages 60 volt 120 volt 240 volt 271 volt 400 volt 480 volt 600 volt and 1000 volt based on the voltage we have certain models like strikes of 30 a b c and d strikes of 40 a b c d e f and g strikes of 80 a b c d e and f so these are the various models available uh, <clears throat> with strikes of series spds now this is one of the major important advantages what bus bar is, uh, bus bar mounted spds have over other spds again uh, these are test all these spds are tested with vde as well as ul1449 fourth edition now if you see uh, in class 1 spd strikes of 30 even the least uh, rated spd is tested with 2000 uh, surges of 10 kilo amperes each now normally a normal dindel spd is tested with maybe 10 15 20 surges now their testing method is once a surge is given to a dindel spd it is allowed to cool down before giving the second surge but practically lightning is not going to wait uh, for equipment or spd to cool down in real uh, life lightning can be multiple and it can be back to back let's say there can be back to back 10 lightning strikes or 10 subsequent impulses for that we have tested our bus bar mounted SPDs with 2000 uh, back to back strikes of 10 kilo amperes and strikes of HP, uh, AT specially tested with 100 back to back strikes of 65 kilo amperes each. <clears throat> also, we have tested our SPDs with uh, long duration impulses also, like 250 numbers of 250 amperes, 2 millisecond uh, impulses. All three SPDs have been tested with these impulses. Uh, these are the various uh, connection examples of uh, bus bar mounted SPDs, how a bus bar mounted SPDs are connected. Normally, you can uh, make a separate as bar, earth bus bar for connection of these SPDs. And also, you can connect it on the face bus bar also. Only while, now with this type of connection, we are ensuring that since it is connected on the bus bar, wire length is zero. Wire length is very, very short in zero. Only small uh, wire length of let's say 10 mm or something is required just to connect SPD uh, with the body of the panel which is again connected to earth. So with the use of this kind of SPDs, we can make wire length very minimum, almost like zero. <clears throat> now, what are the other advantages of uh, uh, this bus bar mounted SPDs? They are completely maintenance free. Now, see, uh, imagine we have installed an SPD in, let's say a 3200 amps panel, a Drindle mounted SPD. We have installed in parallel connection with some, uh, let's say, uh, some flag indication. Now it's a parallel device. We don't know when it is going to fail. Let's say an SPD has failed after two years, but it's a parallel device. It failed in open circuit mode. It disconnected itself. How, how we are going to know unless and until we go and physically check the panel, we, we won't know whether SPD is working or not working. And practically in India, it is very rare. Maybe once in six months only, uh, we are going to check the panel. So in that case, our system is uh, left unprotected. So once we use this uh, bus bar mounted SPDs, they are warranted for 10 years. Anyhow, 10 years they are warranted and they have a lifetime of 20 plus years. This again, I am going to explain in uh, further slides also. So we are not, we should not be worried about the maintenance, going to regularly have a periodic check, uh, checkup of an SPD, whether it's working or not working. Uh, safe behavior under lightning condition. Uh, SPD can withstand multiple higher energy surges without sacrificing itself. This we are going to discuss in the uh, further slide also. We, there is a test uh, details of, in the next slide. Better overall, uh, overall protection. Uh, fuseless design allows optimum protection level. Uh, up to certain ampere rating, these SPDs don't need a backup protection. So that will allow uh, a very less voltage protection level. <coughs> Suitable for direct installation with high uh, surge current. For the places where these surges are very common and very frequent, we can use these SPDs. Uh, these SPDs are uh, again uh, TOV tested SPDs. TOV is one of the most important parameter in an SPD, temporary over voltage. Uh, it is like uh, normally as we told that SPD is going to operate when there is a voltage uh, more than voltage protection level. But sometimes there can be a small voltage across, across an SPD of 440 volt or maybe uh, more then that can create a failure in SPD. So these SPDs have immunity against TOV voltages. Okay. 
so again these spds are tested as, uh, as per ic as well as ul as you know ul is one of the most uh, uh, safest standard in the world under writers laboratory so we have tested with ul 1449 fourth edition as well as ic 61643 part 11 2011 so we have installed almost 20 million units uh, now it has become almost 25 million units uh, with practically zero failure rate we have not received a, a single complaint for this 20 uh, million units installed <coughs> across worldwide that is not only in india it is worldwide so these are the uh, some important uh, parameters of the uh, bus power mounted spds nominal voltage uh, i have taken a certain series of voltage which is normally used in india uh 277 volt which has an mcov of 350 volt uh for all these three uh, models strike so of 30 40 and 80c now uh, nominal discharge current is same for all three models again it is a test method they test it with 20 kilo amperes only maximum discharge current for strike so of 30 is 50 kilo ampere strike so of 40 is 140 kilo ampere strike so of 80 is 200 kilo amperes now when i am telling you this uh, 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 values 50 140 and 200 kilo uh, kilo amperes this is per pole rating this is not the total rating of four poles this is per pole rating impulse current rating is 7.5 kilo ampere uh, for strikes of 30 12.5 kilo ampere for strikes of 40 and 25 kilo amperes for strikes of 80 now again we have tested strikes of 80 with higher rating also that again is going to come in the future uh, for the slides uh, short circuit rating is 50 kilo ampere for strikes of 30 85 kilo ampere for strikes of 40 and 65 kilo amperes for strikes of 80 and again which is further tested with more rating also uh, tov voltage strikes of 30 40 and 80 again are tested for 528 volt standard has recommended spds to be tested with 442 volts for strikes of series spds are tested with 528 volt which is uh, much much better response time one of the most important parameter uh, with respect to an spd all the bus bar mounted spds have a response time of 1 nanoseconds and there is no uh, no uh, chance of follow current in a uh, strike stop series spd a bus bar mounted spd because it's a mov based spd so <clears throat> the endurance uh, testing of an spd the endurance and lifetime testing of an spd normally uh, we have taken an example of strike stop 40 and it was tested with uh, 10 lifetime cycles what is a lifetime cycle one lifetime cycling uh, is equivalent to 20 years of operation in the field so how we test a one lifetime cycle an spd is given with uh, six numbers of 5 kilo ampere 10 by 350 impulse nine numbers of 3.75 kilo ampere 10 by 350 impulse 24 numbers of 2.5 ka 10 by 350 impulse and 21 numbers of 1.25 ka 10 by 350 impulse this constitutes one lifetime cycle each strike of 40 is tested with total of 10 lifetime cycle that means a normal strike of uh, 40 under a normal condition is going to work for 200 years but anyways we don't know uh, how things will be in 200 years so we we generally uh, ensure 20 year 20 plus years of <coughs> life cycle for an spd so you see on the right side you can see a table Uh, what was the outcome of the result when we uh, done this testing on strikes of 40 the residual voltage that means the voltage protection level almost uh, like a voltage protection level on spd you can see the change in percentage after first life cycle test it was 2.8% second 3.2% and in the 10th uh, test change was only 4.29% uh, in terms of leakage current after uh, first life uh, lifetime test cycle uh, the leakage current was 0.234 milliamperes and after 10th uh, life cycle test the leakage current was only 0.44 uh, 0.444 milliamperes so this is very 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 good uh, test result in terms of operations and reliability so <clears throat> strike soap series spds are uh, again uh, certified by ul for unlimited short circuit test for three cycles <clears throat> that means each spd has been given a short circuit current for 50 milli uh, seconds at 60 hertz frequency so below are the rating uh, that uh, power system available short circuit current uh, test currents for the uh, different models strikes of uh, 30 were tested with 42 kilo amperes uh, uh, short circuit current strikes of 40 were tested with 85 kilo amperes short circuit current And strikes of 80 was tested with 65 kilo ampere short circuit current. 
<clears throat> apart from that we have tested strikes of 80 model uh, strikes of 40 model with a single impulse of 200 kilo amperes 10 by 350 which is the highest possible uh, positive impulse current 200 kilo amperes in level 1 uh, we have seen in lpl1 the maximum expected uh, 10 by 350 current was 200 k so we have tested strikes of 40 even though in the uh, earlier in the parameters we have shown uh, 12.5 k only but still additionally we have tested uh, strikes of 40 with 200 k uh, 10 by 350 impulse current and the result was strikes of didn't explode didn't catch fire and didn't uh, emit any uh, emit any smoke this is the chart of the testing so this is how a normal <coughs> strikes of can be connected there are various uh, lugs can be used it can be mounted on a plate and then connected with a nut it can be mounted on a bus bar it can be used through a uh, crimp terminal a bus bar can be connected uh, on the screw these are the various connection for strikes of so uh, this was the general uh, technical uh, description about the spds uh,